Hello and welcome back to Tiny Artist TV. Today we are going to be doing the first day of our 12 days of D&D &D Summer. So as you can see here, I've just dumped everything into a Google Excel spreadsheet type layout where I have it divided into uh, class, race, and then depending on what class I get, the school of magic, and then if it's a warlock, what their patron is, and the corresponding dice that I will be rolling to uh, determine those roles. So on the other side here, I have this random dice generator. I'd consider rolling a physical dice for this, but because I don't really have the camera set up for that, I figured this would be easier for you guys to see and also determine that I am indeed not cheating with these rolls. Um, so the first combination that we get here is going to end up being number 14, which is a centaur, number 12, which is a wizard, and he ended up being in the, or she, I guess I should do a D4 to determine gender too, um, but a 7, which puts them in the school of necromancy. What's up with these <laughs> equine creatures being necromancers? Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started with the sketch. Another thing for this series is that I'm not really going to be focusing on the color. Um, they're going to be pretty short videos because I am going to be doing them every day for the next 12 days since it's the 12 days of D&D December. Um, and then I also will have a bonus video for you guys at the end, something that my husband and I composed in the car on the way back home. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just get started with the sketch for now and uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. For the first sketch here, um, I was kind of working with him holding some kind of like pole arm, and then I remembered that this was supposed to be a necromancer. Like holding a pole arm is kind of my go to, so um, I get rid of that, as you can see. Um, and honestly, this whole first day of DD December kind of ended up just being a warm up to get into the flow of things. Um, here I am again trying to draw this pole arm. <laughs> I do eventually change the left arm to be outward facing um, and doing some kind of spell casting. I don't know, I just, the, it made the pose look so much more balanced and dynamic when it was like that. I guess I could have given him some kind of like necrotic staff or blade and now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of regret that I didn't. But um, we end up with him casting some kind of necrotic magic. The skeleton was just kind of making things a little weird because I want these to be character-based designs. Um, so as you can see, I get rid of that. And then I try to draw this centaur's freaking hooves. So ignoring that, this is the first layer of quote-unquote line art, which is really just sketch layer number two. And a lot of artists do this when they're trying to figure out where they want their lines to go. I actually usually just do one line of sketches that's pretty detailed, but for this one I was getting kind of frustrated with the pose, so I figured I would just do the base shapes on the sketch layer and then do another layer of lines so I can figure out where I want my details to go, and then I do a final layer of lines and fix the things that didn't get fixed in the first two layers and that ended up working really well um or at least as well as it could have for something of this nature i wanted to go with the dynamic pose because with the centaur just standing there it was just kind of it was too stiff um so i definitely challenged myself with doing something like this because a i don't draw horses all that often and you saw at the beginning of the video i was pulling up references of horses just trying to get a I don't have a photographic memory but I tend to like hold images in my head to some degree so at least I had that to go off of but this pose I couldn't find a reference for this specific pose which is what I was having trouble with so I basically spend most of my time trying to block out where the foreshortening is happening like where the front leg disappears and where the back leg, the back leg, uh, I only end up drawing three out of the four legs because I figured that this one would actually end up lining up with the way the pose goes directly with this forefront leg here. So it's just, it, 
it gets done. <laughs> but it's definitely, yeah, of course I would get, as far as my repertoire goes, the most difficult one. At least I got it out of the way. Because with some of the more obscure races like Tabaxi and Kenku, like I have a Kenku character. I have a Tabaxi character. As a matter of fact, if I get those, I'm... Maybe I will come up with a new character, but I'm most likely just going to end up drawing them. Because I don't have a lot of art of them, but I've drawn, you know... As a matter of fact, I don't think I have just a straight up human D&D &D character. Because if you're playing a fantasy game, why would you be a human? Because you're already a human in real life, and I guess you could be a human with like superpowers, and that could be interesting, but... In my experience, it's always been more fun to play something like you could never actually be in real life. Um, my first characters, I defaulted to an elf because I was going through some personal issues and I was like, oh, how can I be the best version of me? How about an elf? Because she's thin and pretty and has long, beautiful hair. I'm small, medium weight, and I have locks. Like, I do not look anything like my D&D &D character. My first one, anyway. And then, of course, as I got older and got over those issues, my character started reflecting more of me. And my favorite character, I may have mentioned her in one of my other videos, is Umoran Don Cad, who's a half-orc. She's my height. She's my weight. She could kick your butt six ways to Sunday. So <laughs> she's basically me if I was a half-orc. And I love her to pieces because, for me, that was kind of my being able to play D&D &D without any of the insecurities I had when I first started playing D&D. &D. And that's the great thing about this game is that I've seen so many stories about like not just D&D &D, but like t t excuse me, tabletop RPGs like helping people overcome like their social issues and just like whatever kind of turmoil is going on because it's you and your friends and you're telling the story together and the world may be fictional and the problems may be fictional but you can still solve them with real world applications and that's like honestly i think that's part of the widespread appeal like yes like penny arcade and critical role and like they're all fantastic and popular but the appeal the reason they're popular is because they're just friends sitting around a table telling a story and anybody can do that and the issues that they discuss when they're at the table are issues that are not exclusive to a fantasy world so anyway i feel like i've dumped enough <laughs> personal information on you guys for this video. Can't give it all away or else you'll just leave me. <laughs> um, so finishing up, as you can see, this is the final line layer. Um, and just kind of doing some fluffy necrotic magic. This is probably the only part of the sketch that I am 100% satisfied with. Um, basically because, like, I do like to draw a lot of magic, so this was something that wasn't too far out of my wheelhouse. Like, the pose looks okay. From the front, it looks fine. And the longer you look at it, please don't point out any issues, because I know there are probably issues with the people who draw horses for a living. I am so sorry. I really was trying to make this video like five minutes and it ended up being almost like twice as long because I kept nitpicking with the line art as I do um, in the future. I will set a timer to try to limit myself. But something that, <laughs> as you can see, I'm adding fluff to the hooves and for what? I mean, I guess I wanted him to be like a Clydesdale or like a big beefy, uh... Oh yeah, that was the other thing. So um, I actually went to the Draw It app and because I have a premium membership with Draw It, it's like $2, it's not a big deal. Um, there were some other prompts that were unlocked. One of the prompts was backstory. So the backstory that I ended up getting for this character, which actually ended up fitting really well, they were raised by a soothsayer their secret is they have social phobia. As a necromancer, necromancers tend to be kind of 
awkward and secluded, so that just kind of works. His special skill is that he's as strong as an ox, which I thought was hilarious because he's a centaur, so it's kind of on the nose there. Um, the only thing I didn't really include when I was uh, formulating this sketch was that in the, uh, the backstory mix-up, it said that his motivation was to be a master at swordplay, so I gave him a knife, but necromancers aren't really like going around dueling people in the middle of the street, so I just kind of left that one out. But everything else was like pretty much spot on for this character. Um, it didn't influence as much of the sketch as I thought it would. Um, for the future ones, I hope I get something kind of off the wall so I can actually include elements into the sketch itself. But I just thought it added something interesting to this character. And once again, because I am not like being precious with this character. Um, if you guys want to use them as like your character or as inspiration, feel free. Once again, just give me a shout out, a little bit of credit. That's all I ask. <laughs> I am just here to share my art and apparently my personal baggage with you guys. Um, so we're getting kind of towards the end of the piece here and I'm just adding a little bit of filigree so this is something else that like the advantage of digital art has is that I can do one of these pieces and then just flip it onto the other four corners instead of having to draw it every single time and losing my freaking mind because I already did that with the filigree that's on his clothing and I'm like I'm not spending any more time on this piece than I have to because at this point real time i had been working on it for about two hours with breaks in between but yeah i kind of had enough of just like killing myself over the detail work for what was supposed to be a short video so this is the finished piece i cut out doing the showing you guys the color and the shading because that's a pretty easy step you just color it in and then do the shading as an overlay but here we are at the end of the first day of D in December. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a like, maybe think about subscribing, share it with your friends. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a weird day.